good morning and welcome to our english channel language skill development today we are going to read a poem from class 10th from unit 4 adolescence reading b the poem is about me written by ramendra kumar in this poem the poet has tried to express the feelings of an adolescent student who feels himself neglected because he thinks that he hasn't got any kind of quality in him he feels that he is neither very talented nor he is a very good student in studies so he feels that he hasn't any qualities and so what kind of feelings come to his heart when he sees people addressing him or the way he is addressed by the people he expresses his sorrows and whatever he feels how he should be treated by people in this poem ramendra kumar has expressed the feelings of that neglected child in a very impressive way the first stanza of the poem reads i have not one but two names hey you and what's your name that is how i am known and i have no one else to blame in these lines the child he feels that because he has got no quality in him he is addressed in a very unfamiliar in a very unknown way and the way people address him when they call him saying hey you or he is called by the way what's your name so he says that this uh, these are the two names by which i am known by people and he says that i do not blame anyone or any person for calling me in this way in the second stanza he says who would remember someone who is good at nothing who has can or ever will excel even in a single thing in this stanza we can see the child's uh, sorrow or his very distressed feelings when he says that who would remember someone who is good at nothing this shows that the child knows very well that he is good at nothing he says that who has can or ever will excel even in a single thing he knows that he hasn't got that much of capacity or ability or he hasn't got that quality through which he can excel either in studies or in sports or in any field so that is why he says that i am a person whom no one will remember ever because i am good at nothing in the next stanza the child counts those qualities that are possessed by other children and what makes them impress others so he says about the talents with other children have some are good at studies others in many a game some paint a pretty picture and earn for themselves a name in this stanza the child says that there are number of children or many friends that he has they have a number of qualities in them he says that some of my friends or some children they are very good at their studies others they are very good at games and a few of them are good painters and these qualities make them to earn a good name for themselves that means these qualities which are possessed by a children these qualities of the children make a good impression on the parents or on the teacher or on their friends or the people those who are familiar to them and so by these qualities 
the children make a good impression about themselves in the hearts of people, then he feels a little bit dejected. He feels a little bit sorrowful when he tries to know about himself, when he tries to think what he is. In the next stanza he says, but what about me? He is trying to analyze his own qualities or whatever qualities or vices or virtues that he has in him, he is trying to analyze and he says, but what about me? I have nothing that can impress a single soul, neither talent nor looks nor ability to achieve a solitary goal. Solitary means single. So, he says that when I analyze or when I compare myself to the other children, I find that I do not have any of these qualities in me, neither I am good at studies, nor I am good at games, neither I am a good painter or nor can I draw something very nice. So, he says that I have nothing that can impress a single soul. He says because I do not have any kind of quality in me, I cannot impress even a single person and he says neither talent nor looks nor ability. He says neither I have got talent in me, neither I am very good to look at nor I have the ability of achieving a solitary goal. Even if I think of a goal, even if I try to achieve something, I find myself very incompetent, I find myself lacking the competence in me to achieve even a single goal that can impress people. But wait, am I really useless? Only some flesh and bones or do I have something inside me, a quality that is truly my own? Now, in this stanza, the child is trying to give importance to his own self. When he finds that all his friends have some of the other qualities and they can have a good impression, why not he? So, he is trying to make an assessment of his own self in some other way. Now, he is telling, he is asking questions to himself. He is asking to himself that, am I really useless? He says when all my friends have some of the other qualities, some are good at studies, some are good at sports, some are good painters, am I useless? Then he says only some flesh and bones. So what should I think of myself that only I am a piece of body, only my body is a piece of flesh and bones and I do not have any quality. So, when he asks this question to himself, then indirectly he is giving the answer also and he says, or do I have something inside me? Then he says, if I do not have those achieved qualities, being a good student, being good at studies, being good at sports, being good at some other places can be achieved qualities. Now, this child is trying to find a quality in himself. He says that or do I have something inside me, a quality that is truly my own? Then he says that I do not have good looks, I am not a brilliant student, I am not a good painter, but then should I think that I have a quality in me that is truly my own? Do I own that quality in me? Then he says, a heart that beats for others and joys and sorrows it shares, a mind that looks beyond, a soul that truly cares. Now what this child finds in himself is that he finds himself that though he has not got any quality in him, he says that he has a very good heart because he is full of compassion and care for others. He knows that he is very compassionate and he is readily helpful to others. So, he says that I have got a heart that beats for others. That means a heart that is ever ready to 
share the joys and sorrows of others, a heart that is always ready to share problems of peoples and to solve them, to help them. So he says, as and sorrows it shares, he knows that his heart is a very beautiful heart. His heart is full of compassionate care and love and he is always ready to share the joys and sorrows of his friends or other people, those who are in contact with him. Then he says, a mind that looks beyond, a soul that truly cares. He says that my mind is different from others. People have got talents that they have achieved, but my talent is within me. I have a talent. My heart and mind goes to some other direction which is full of love and compassion for others and it's a true heart that is always caring for others. In this world today, if a loving heart is a treasure, then I pray to everyone to judge me using the new measure. These lines are very wonderful lines. From these lines we come to know that a small child, an adolescent child has experienced a world of negligence and carelessness. He has been expecting love, compassion and care from the people who are around him, but he hasn't got that uh, things from the society or from the people around him. And he has very well expressed in these lines, in this world today, if a loving heart is a treasure. He says, he very well knows that today's world is full of selfishness. He knows that people are very self-centered and have become very selfish. So he says, if a loving heart is a treasure, and over to that he also knows that his heart is a big treasure. Why he feels that? Because he knows that his heart is full of love and compassion for others. He is ever ready to help people. He is ever ready to solve the problems of people. So he finds that his heart is much different from the heart of the people of this world. And he says that if a loving heart is a treasure, then I pray to everyone to judge me using a new measure. Now what he has found in this world, that people judge others through their capabilities or good qualities or virtues which are just achieved by them in the course of time. But what he finds about himself is that if people judge me using a new measure, I also have a very good quality in me and that is don't judge me by how many prizes I never win but by how many sorrows I share not by the number of claps I don't earn but by my ready stock of compassion and care. In this stanza, in this stanza, the child is telling, he is telling people, he is demanding people or he is very earnestly wishing that people should judge him in a different way, in a way like how a true human being should be in today's world. So he says, don't judge me by how many prizes I never win. Because right from the beginning he has already said that he hasn't got talents in him, neither he has any kind of capabilities in him, neither he is a good uh, student in studies, neither he is a good player, neither a good painter. So he says that don't judge me by how many prizes I never win. Because he hasn't got that quality so there is no question of winning a prize for those qualities, but he says that but by how many sorrows I share. He says that if you want you can judge me by the number of sorrows I have shared by uh, myself. I have shared the sorrows of people or whoever are familiar to me, my friends or my 
mates or my family people. So not like the number of claps I don't earn because he hasn't got any kind of talent to display or show in public. So he hasn't earned any clappings from people. So he says that don't judge me by the number of claps I have not earned but by my ready stock of compassion and care. Then he says that if you really want to judge me, you take a different kind of measure. You take a measure of uh, being a real human being in this world today and make a judgment about me by seeing the compassion and care and love that I have in my heart for others. Don't ignore me. Don't look through. Pay me a little heed, a little nod, a friendly smile. That is all I need. I am an average and ordinary boy. Treat me at least like a person. Give me a name, anything that you like. But please, at least make me feel human. These two stanzas of the poem these ending stanzas of the poem express the child's deep sorrow when he finds himself neglected by people around him. He says when he finds that he has some inborn qualities, the qualities of love and compassion that is in his heart when he finds such good qualities in him and when he compares himself to other students or the other mates, he finds that his quality is no less than the qualities that his mates have achieved. So he says he is just requesting people with deep sorrow, he says don't ignore me, don't look through, please don't ignore me, means even I have a quality that has to be accepted by you all for which you have to recognize me and I should be recognized because I have a very deep and good quality in me which can be found very less in the world today. He says pay me a little heed. He wants people to look at him not to neglect him a little nod, a friendly smile. He wants that people should also treat him with a friendly manner, in a friendly smile. That is all I need. So he also wants that people should love him, should have compassion and care for him, should be friendly with him and he should also be treated in a good manner by people. I am an average and ordinary boy. He very well recognizes, he very well realizes and knows that he is an ordinary and average boy. He knows that he hasn't got any achieved qualities in him. Yet he says, treat me at least like a person. Give me a name. In the beginning of the poem we have read that this child is being called by two very peculiar names, hey you and what's your name? So now the child wants that at least he also should be treated like a human being, being given a good name to him and he says give me a name, anything that you like. He says he is requesting people, he is demanding people that please don't call me by those two names, hey you and what's your name. He wants that people should give him a nice name, anything that they want but please at least make me feel human. He wants himself to be felt that he is also a part of this society. He is also a part of his friends and mates and so he is requesting, he is demanding that he should also be given a name and uh, treated with love and compassion. When we go through this poem, we find a reality in it. It is very true that in today's world when achievement and uh, people's qualities are being assessed, we find the ordinary and the average 
adolescents being neglected even at schools, at home and anywhere in the society. So, whatever the child here expresses his feelings, it is true to the today's world scenario. Thank you.